Hey everyone, it's Shawna Young, Occupational Therapist with Mountain Therapy Services. Today I'm talking about handwriting legibility. So we're going to go over exercises, strategies, setup, and I'm going to break all that down for you so you can improve your handwriting so that you and other people can read it better. Um, handwriting requires the muscle strength and coordination of many different muscles, including the small muscles inside your hand, inside the palm of your hand, the intrinsic muscles. Also requires the extrinsic muscles that are in the forearm. These help us to flex and extend our fingers, our wrist, to abduct and adduct the fingers, and to oppose our finger, our thumb to our fingers, and to be able to hold and manipulate our writing utensil. But there's lots of exercises and coordination drills out there. While they do a great job of improving our muscle strength, our coordination, and general function, principles of neuroplasticity tell us that the best way to practice or to retrain a skill is, is a task-specific training. That means training your handwriting by using handwriting. So we need to get real specific there and really focus in on what areas of handwriting do you have trouble with and how can we improve them. So the the agenda for this video is that we're gonna do a little pretest to see what your handwriting looks like, how you can analyze it to see what the problem areas are, exercises to improve that, strategies to help you with your setup and success. And then um, hopefully that will help you to, to move on with better handwriting that you and other people can read too. So first, um, this video is appropriate for you. If you can pick up a pencil or pen, you can, you can as assume a tripod grasp, that's a thumb and two fingers. Even if you can't hold it long or it slips, that's okay, we're gonna work on that through this. So if you can do that and you have some wrist movement here, that's gonna go a long way with this video. If you can't do that, those are the areas you need to work on. Work on picking up the pencil, releasing it, moving your fingers and thumb in, into flexion and extension while maintaining that grasp, that tripod grasp. Moving your fingers and thumb up and down the pencil, rolling the pencil, rolling the pencil like this, so work on those and then return to this video to look more specifically at handwriting skills. So while we're talking about pens and pencils, um, choose a pen that is going to write smoothly for you, the ink dries quickly so you're not having smudging, make sure it's not um, super cheap pens that stop and start and skid on the paper below. Um, if you're using a pencil, just look at the wearing on it. If you're using a lot of force, you may wear the pencil out at, at, on the same, you know, on the opposite side, you can erase it. So it's kind of nice in that way. Um, so for purposes of today, um, you're going to grab a paper and a pen or pencil and then a table in front of you that's about the height of your elbow. You want a supported surface for your elbow to write, especially if you have ataxia, um, incoordinated involuntary movements, um, that proximal support of your elbow through the table is gonna be really important for you. So let's take a look at that. I'm gonna show you my setup here and we're gonna do our little pretest and then analyze our handwriting. What I'd like you to do anytime you're starting your handwriting journey each day, I want you to write the date on your paper so that you have something to compare to later because oftentimes it's subtle changes and it's nice to have those reminders of how far you've come. So for our pretest, um, write the date and then I want you to print your name. We're talking about print at first because that's our basic letter formation and um, you you know, have likely developed a very eccentric style of writing where it may be some cross between cursive writing and print. But, but for people to read it, um, let's start with print today and work on the letter formation and then your style may change from there. So writing your name, writing your address the best that you can, writing your city and state and your zip code, and then writing your phone number below. And then signing your name. 
And then what I'm gonna have you do is you're gonna write a pangram. A pangram is a, is a sentence that has all the letters of the alphabet in it. So the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog is an example of that. So if you need to, pause the video and take time to write that the best you can. Now you're gonna take a look at your handwriting. Notice the spacing in between your letters, the spacing between your words. If you have trouble with letter closure, like in the letter O, or if you have trouble with ascension of your letters, like the lowercase b and how it goes up towards the upper line, or if you have trouble with descent of the letters, like the lowercase letter g as it goes down below the line. Notice if you are able to write straight or if your writing goes upwards or down, slants at all. Um, these are the areas we're gonna focus on. So take a moment, analyze that, see where the problem areas are, where you have more trouble with legibility. Circle those areas so you can kind of think about what those patterns are. And then I'm gonna show you some examples of common areas of challenge and how to work on those. So for my handwriting practice, I'm gonna be using graph paper, which I really like if you are working on consistency of your letter formation, if you're working on the motor planning of writing letters. This is a great place to start because it has, helps you with the consistent spacing between words and letter sizes. So right here, um, you can practice some of those same words you wrote before. You could write your name, your address, your phone number. You can practice writing um, your capital letters across, given that they're all the same size. You can do the same thing with your lowercase letters. You're filling the space of the square. For your upper letters, um, I mean your uh, lowercase letters that go above, you can write a little bit above the square. So I didn't really give myself a lot of room right there. But here we can, I can show you, there we go. And as they go below, otherwise we're filling that space of the letter. So we're being really intentional, taking our time. After you write a few words or a line of information, or if you start to fatigue, you need to self monitor. You need to look and see what's going on. Do you need to readjust your pencil or your pen? Do you need to take a break and do some weight bearing stretching? If you return after a break and you feel like your hand is very tired and your quality is still failing, then maybe you need to take a longer break. We do have small hand muscles making it difficult to continue and they do fatigue. So maybe you have to return for another session later or the next day. You can practice the same with your numbers. Now, there's a lot of drills out there for handwriting that emphasize um, the types of strokes you have to have. Um, you know, with writing. So, you know, diagonal lines here or X's, practicing O's, practicing waves and upside down. Um, you know, they imitate a lot of strokes of the letters that we have, swirls. You know, you can practice those kind of doodles, but really I think practicing the letters that are the most frustrating and illegible is the most important thing that you can do. So write as long as your, your words are legible and then take a break. No sense in practicing what is illegible and practicing the wrong way. Um, then what's really important is to practice both being able to copy, but also being able to have um, just creative expression um, that is unplanned and more spontaneous. So copying exercises might be you know, copying a recipe. It could be a proverb, some kind of verse to, you know, lyrics. Um, it could be the Dolch words, D-O-L-C-H. Dolch um, words are words that are commonly used in the English language for writing and reading and they teach those at a young age because we recognize those so those are words that may come up you know pretty commonly but then you want to practice spontaneous writing too so things like shopping lists so this kind of paper may become your best friend for to-do lists and planning and 
grocery list because it's very organized for how you're learning to write. And the goal here would be that you practice this way, but then you can also practice um, translating that over to maybe just regular lined paper. Uh, maybe you find that in between you might like um, handwriting paper that has the dashed lines here. You can still practice the spacing by putting your pen or pencil down. Um, the spacing between your words. So you're rising your lowercase letters to that dashed line, creating a space. You're rising those lowercase letters that have the ascending piece, the ascending stroke above that line. And for the lowercase letters that go down below, like J, Y, and so you're practicing big movements. Now, for people with micrographia, so small handwriting, where the handwriting gets real small as you go, this kind of um, paper is really good for that because you can work on focusing and giving your, this, yourself the cue to write big and exaggerated. Big, exaggerated. Now without the squares that we had in the graph paper, you should practice taking your pen or pencil off of the page before writing the next letter because oftentimes people cramp their letters together quite a bit. So tell yourself, big, reach, high, low, touching each of the lines. Now some of you write cursive or maybe you're further along in this process of handwriting. Maybe it's legible but not neat. You could still use, you know, if you prefer cursive to write um, in the lines here, doing the same thing, using the lines as a guide. And check your legibility here, still taking your time, being very intentional, maximizing the time of day where your spasticity is lower, possibly. Um, Again, writing things that are important to you, but think about which style of writing you want to use that's going to be the most legible for other people to read as well. Um, so practice, practice. So when making your goals, take a look at what you're able to do now. Maybe you can write a couple words legibly and then you start to fatigue or you start to fail in your legibility and bump up a little further than that to set a goal that's reasonable and reachable. So maybe to create a sentence and maybe then it's to write two lines of legible text. Maybe it's to do that without taking a break. Maybe it's to create a shopping list um, or a to-do list um, that's legible to somebody else. Somebody else can read your information that you wrote. Um, and so start with that. Another way to change your writing surface, which is helpful for some people, is to use a slanted surface. So this is just a large three-ring notebook, but this is useful for people if you have head and neck strain or you find your posture is curling, curving too much, that you need to bring it up more. Sometimes this is a good cue for getting that up, more upright posture and reducing that strain there. Also, if you're having visual challenges, visual perceptual challenges, or um, you just have trouble um, and you need to see the text and bring it closer to you as you're writing, which can also help you with self-monitoring for errors and challenges in your, um, in your strokes, whether that's like the curvy parts or the reaching high, reaching low, you can monitor that better and see how you're doing and then adjust your writing as you need to. Um, remembering to stretch before, after, during. Um, one warm up I didn't mention before is, you know, you can take putty just if you're having proprioceptive challenges in the hand before you're writing, in addition to weight bearing, just getting some putty that's not too resistive for you where you fatigue, but just getting your hand moving, working on getting the fingers to the thumb, do some flicks, some quick flicks. Um, if spasticity is not affecting you, if spasticity is, take those nice and slow. Um, bringing each finger to your thumb and opening each time. You can also take your putty and practice some strokes writing it into a resistive surface. So I'll show you that. So writing crossed. Practice.
practicing your letters. If you're having that, you need that feedback to practice here. Okay, pinching. Again, not trying to fatigue the muscles, but just kind of waking them up if you have some sensory motor challenges. So as you're improving, practice writing on regular paper. Um, practice writing with and without the pencil grips if you're using one. And then um, test it out, see if it's legible. Are you able to read back? Because that's the most important thing. You can use this for journaling, um, writing notes to people, greeting cards, lots of ways to practice your handwriting. Um, I hope that you found some useful tools and tips and tricks and exercises. Uh, make sure you're um, checking back to see where you were when you first started. Um, you're not going to expect change overnight, but with each day you should see some changes. Even if that's the way that you hold your pencil, the amount of uh, fatigue you feel or pressure you feel, how legible it is and all of that. So, all right. Thanks. Have a great one.